everybody this is D chilling in my basement with my too tall tank just to give you another update on the freshwater side and don't feel bad my saltwater people I ain't giving up on you working on the ponds or working on the plants it's summertime it's gardening time but I ain't forget about my reef people I'm giving an update on the saltwater side very very soon but on the freshwater side, everybody's doing all right. But I want to address one issue that attacks all of us in the summertime, and that is heat and temperature. I've unplugged my heater, which I do till about August or beginning of September, because you can get sudden cold uh, shifts in the temperature. Since this is in my basement and my heater is over here, I can pretty much determine what the temperature is going to be down in the tank. But how I address temperature and rising uh, heat levels in the tank is I definitely aerate the water. You want to make sure you're adding oxygen because these guys respirate through their scales, gills, skin like we do. They don't sweat like we do, but they are cold-blooded animals, which means their activity and metabolism is based on the surrounding temperature of the water that they're in. So how I address this is I trim the plants back because tr plants consume oxygen during the daytime. I mean, well, not during the daytime, during the nighttime, rather. I had that backwards. During the nighttime, they consume oxygen. And what happens is your pH will tend to shift at night. So I want to oxygenate that water and trim the plants. You can see it's getting hot. The plants are sending down a lot of roots. Now, if you saw my previous videos, I trimmed a lot of this, this pennywort to put in the outside pond. And what I'm going to also do, trim some of this uh, java fern. I'm going to trim some of that back. I'm going to put some outside and I'm going to probably glue this here in a different place. Because I want to make sure that the plants are not out competing the fish for oxygen in the evening. And dropping that pH at night. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that you have turnover in the water. That means the water in the bottom of the tank is circulating with the water in the top of the tank. Because you want gas exchange in your tank. You want gas exchange because the plants utilize the CO2. But the plants down here will get less CO2 because gas rises, remember. And if you agitate the water too much at the surface, it will escape. And this is why people sometimes have a hard time. I know I have a hard time with plants like, uh, with, uh, what was it? Now I can't think of one. But basically swords in this plant because swords root downward and the leaves grow up. So they need that CO2 at the level in which they're growing. And don't mind my phone ringing. It's probably just some uh, junk caller. But anyway, you'll see a lot of root growth up at this level. You'll see a lot of green leaves up at the higher level and a little bit of yellowing at the lower level. And that's because that CO2 lack down here. You'll also lose a lot of uh, your minerals in the summertime. You're going to have to do more water changes and keep tabs on your pH of your water. I really don't test a lot of it in pH in these freshwater tanks especially in the summer because you know that pH will drop at night due to the lower oxygen levels so I increase the gas the, the oxygen I want to feed the fish a little bit less especially closer to the evening I want to feed them earlier if you have an automatic feeder it's good to use that I have an automatic feeder that I use when I go away or if I'm I'm going to put them on a special diet. I use that for my dry foods. You can see I've trimmed a lot of the growth up at the top because it was cutting the light down here. It was blocking a lot of light. As you can see, the pothos will grow towards the light and, and they will burn. If you have pothos, you want to make sure that you're moving the leaves. You want to train it to grow away from directly under the light fixture. You may have to put weight on here. What you can do is they have plant weights. You can put them here. What I do is I use suction cups like this and I can just put my plants in the suction cups and grow it towards where I want to put it. I'm not using that now because I want it to grow down, but that is one trick that I use. Suction cups are cheap. You can buy these at Petco or at your local pet store. Cut a slit in it. 
put it around your, your branch or what have you, whatever you want to plant there and just simply whoop, stick it in the tank and stuck it on and there you go and then you're good to go but I don't want to do that actually you can use this also to weight the plant down to get it to grow downward and get a longer plant but uh, summertime poses a lot of tricks I know on the salt water side a lot of people use chillers we tend not to do that in the freshwater side which is really funny because uh, we have similar issues with the temperature but worried as much as, uh, with plants as we are with coral but a lot of the same principles do apply to both and I want to hit that home and just say that we gear a lot of our technology towards the reef but a lot of that technology can be used for the freshwater especially dosing you can dose your iron if you're growing uh, specialty plants like I, I dose potassium. I don't dose a lot of iron, but I do dose potassium. I noticed that my potassium kind of really gets me that green color and strong root growth. Got a little Anubis growing down here, which is looking pretty cool. And uh, you might want to cut down your light schedules. If you have your lights on a long time, you want to cut it down a little bit. I set my lights to come on earlier in the summertime when it's cooler in the morning and to go off a little uh, closer to the evening when it's hotter. And this way I'm naturally controlling the temperature. Um, what else can I go into? Other than that, it's really not complicated. But I do keep things as simple as possible. I don't put a lot of uh, gadgetry. This tank is basically a biotope. You can see my shrimp right now. I really don't see them a lot in this tank. I'm trying to focus, there you go. Don't see them a lot in this tank because it's so thickly grown. I see a lot of fry in here. I believe I lost one of my balloon mollies. I haven't seen them. But it's so thick in here, you never know sometimes. They can be hidden for quite some time. There's quite a few snails in here, quite a few fry in there. Don't pay this tank a lot of attention. I pretty much leave it on cruise control. I can see them getting defined. Those are guppies, look like some uh, fancies in there. I was hoping to get some balloon uh, molly fry in there, but not really cooperating and I cut back that sword plant quite a bit because it was looking yellow and you can see it's got some really nice new growth on it once again I don't dose this tank with anything pothos stuck to the back with some uh, acrylic hangers that I've made or another trick that I'll show you bend it over the side warm it up with the over the stove bend it drill holes in it and guess what now it holds my uh internal uh filter so that it doesn't come off from the suction cups if anybody uses these you know those suction cups are a pain in the neck this one i cut a little hole in it so the suction cup fits through the hole and it basically hangs right on the side so that's a little tip for you guys if if you hate suction cups like i do you see the temperature is pretty uh lower than it would normally be for this time of year it's up been running about 90 on a regular these days and this has kept the tank right below that 80 it's about 78 77 so uh, once again the lighting schedules uh, circulating that water making sure you got good uh, air flow in there the fish appreciate it you see a fish getting lethargic you know you want to look at your pH, you want to look at the oxygen going into the tank because they will slow down and they will show signs of stress. And uh, that'll be it for today. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Click subscribe. Nothing fancy, no fancy adding in this, in this video. And uh, just keep an eye on your tanks. It's warm, warmer than normal. Here in New York, we've been getting quite a heat wave. I did lose one of my angels, had a nice angel. I don't know if it was more fighting uh, with the other fish because this one's been doing fine. And uh, for those of you that know me, I have never ever been able to keep rams. And I want to thank my uh, friend over at the 
Petland, young lady over there at Petland on Avenue U, she was like, yeah, you've been adding them uh, a bunch at a time, and they've probably been fighting to the death. And I noticed this guy has been a model citizen, behaving himself, not fighting with anybody. So I want to thank her because her advice works. You never stop learning in this hobby. You never stop learning. And uh, really like it. I'm really enjoying it. So until next time, this is D signing out. Giving you that hookup on the freshwater side. Click subscribe. And click that thumbs up so that you get notified of updates. Oh, I love my Congos. Oh, I love Congos. I need a 150 gallon tank just to plant out so I can get about 20 Congos. And I want a school. I want a large school of Variatus. I really love the color patterns of these Variatus. Really striking fish. Really simple, simple fish. Often overlooked. Uh, but really striking in the pattern. None of them have the same pattern. They really kind of shine in a unique way. So that'll be it. I'll sign out. Chilling. Uh, leave your comments below. You want to share your channel? You can share your channel below. I love to see new uh, YouTubers on there and subscribe to you guys and give you guys a leg up because we're all friends of fish. All right, until next time, this is D signing out. Love, peace, and hair grease. See ya.